Welcome to the long and short. This is your boy Maestro. Every day we aim to bring you some information in the crypto markets on how to trade, the news, things that we're looking at, upcoming projects, etc. So today we're going to highlight a scout play that I took yesterday. Um, some very quick in and out plays, but I'll give you my thought process around it. And I'll tell you guys how you can also take advantage of this moving forward. Okay. If you enjoy this content, go ahead, like, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell notification, and you will be notified when we go ahead and post these videos. All right. So let me go ahead and bring up my drawings and I want to show you guys exactly what I was looking at. All right. Now I notated this entire trade out and I want everyone to be aware that this is how we're going to deliver the content. We're going to show you where we're getting in, tell you where we're getting in, tell you why we're getting out in specific places. So let's zoom out to the one hour because it's important for us to get a context or perspective on where price was being drawn to. All right. So this first short that we took yesterday was sort of an example short just showing in the previous video that you need to push the buttons. Right. Go check out the rant video. Go check out the previous video to this one. I'm going to start to really get hard on guys out here that are using these little manipulation boxes. Right. These long and short boxes. I'm going to get start to get hard on these guys because you guys Right. Honestly, you're not showing the audience your audience. OK, all of your subscribers, you're not being fair with them when you show them that box. We can have an argument about it. OK. Because the reason why is because this box can be manipulated in any way that I see fit. All right. I can tell people that I took along anywhere with this box. All I have to do is snuggle it up to some candles. So you're not showing your audience anything when you show them that box. The best way to categorize that box is use it for estimates. What do I think price is going to go and what do I think my P&L is going to be and what is my risk to reward ratio? That's what that box helps you figure out really quickly. But if you're showing people that I want to trade based on that box and you're using that box as your reference, I automatically know that you're capping automatically. All right. So let's stop capping. Let's start showing the actual examples. OK, so again. Looking to the left, I had context here. I had low here. I had low here. I had some lows here. OK, now, if price is being drawn to this area, I'm expecting price to complete that draw. Why? You have sort of a cup right here. Right. And let's, let's go back to old chart patterns. Right. You have a cup right here. Right. That's going to form into halfway handle break out the other way. Now, usually cup and handles. Right. They're going to break out down. So if you're looking at this pattern, automatically your patterns invalidated. But I'm just using it as an example. OK, if price is drawing here, then that's where I want to go. So let's go back down to the 15 minute. And let's look at this from a tighter perspective. All right. Let's zoom this out a little bit. So the first short again, taken as an example, the second short here was me looking at these areas in price. OK, knowing that price probably wanted to violate this and come down here. So I took the short. OK, the short itself travel down to around this area and let's break it down to like the five minutes so that you can actually see the entry exit points a little bit better all right so this was a very quick short all right the reason why i took the very quick short here in and out was because i was a bit afraid right that price was going to start to reverse as soon as it hit this level but it didn't it kept going so i waited i just waited about five minutes to see what price was going to do from this point so in out right Boom. Price drops down and then starts to reject. See this big wick right there on the candle? This is a good sign. Now, even though it pushed back down to take out that wick, the next action was up. Next action was down. Next action tried to find a low and couldn't find it. It got rejected very hard. Right. Printed that hammer. Now, at this point, right, I'm in. I'm experiencing drawdown, up, drawdown, up. But my convictions are still with the fact that you broke all of this liquidity here. And if we zoom out to the left, we see that this area was snatched. These areas were snatched and it did fill in these imbalances here. Once price achieves that objective and it even took out this low here. Right. Once price achieved all of those different objectives, my thought process was, well, you're ready to go long now. You just knocked out all of these guys down here. OK took all of this liquidity literally from this entire area down to here where else is the next place for you to go up okay now from there okay once price came down into this level we took the long 
the long was carried up into the first imbalance area that was previously left. All right, now let's zoom this out to give you guys an example of why we stopped here. All right, once this imbalance was taken, price started to reject, right? But we took part of that profit here. So we got in with one Bitcoin, or not one Bitcoin, but point one Bitcoin. And I'm taking small amount of risk, right? Because I'm not trying to go super deep into my account to place it all. You know, this is not a major bet here, guys. This is a very risky play, all right? Because you're scalping. Scalping is risky. The price can go either way on you, all right? But this is the bottom. We caught the bottom. Point one Bitcoin. We got out once price traced through this first imbalance. Okay, and price is rallying right now, guys. Pay attention. All right, broke through this imbalance. We took the first piece right here. Okay, second piece we got taken out on a stop loss, but we were in, you know, down here. Where are we at? Down here. Okay, so we still took profits. All right, ultimately, we took profits off the table before price decided to meander around and keep pushing up. Now, price is going to go for these imbalances here. Okay, once it clears out these imbalances, start to look for price to jump over these area highs here okay it's taking liquidity from the other side now if price has been mostly bearish angling down where's the next place for it to go to seek liquidity up and it's going to go get it quickly as you guys can see here now this is the thing i'm going to look at the futures because futures are telling me that the large speculators are snuggling up a little bit closer to that zero line which means that they may start to think net long. I'm thinking, again, January is going to be a sideways month. If they keep pushing these things up here into the end of January, more into February, you're going to see that explosion. It's based on seasonal tendencies and a lot of other things that we're watching here, right? But this creep up by the large speculators closer to that zero line and the push down for the commercials to net short gives me bullish vibes it gives me bullish vibes it really does okay also what gives me bu bullish vibes is the fact that we close we you know the small speculators are creeping closer to the zero line which means that we're taking off longs we're thinking short we're thinking doomsday scenario go on twitter go on instagram your favorite people are talking about shorts right now your favorite people are talking about a bear market right now your favorite people are talking about oh we're still in a bull market but we're in downwards trajectory they're taking off the longs. You see it here. So as the longs come off, large speculators are going to creep up. Commercials are going to go opposite of what the large speculators are doing automatically. Right. They have to be diametrically opposed to serve that market. And so if we see this here, the scrunching up and if we see large speculators talk, start to take net long positions, expect a bull run. OK, expect a bull run. Just like they put in net short positions here and price crashed, the same thing happens on the opposite end. All right. So this is what we're looking for from week to week. Where are the large specs versus the commercials versus us? All right. We're the blue line. Big guys are the, 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 the green line and the commercials, the dealers, the miners. Those guys are the red line. All right. So we're going to be watching this from week to week. And right now it looks like price is definitely rallying. But look at where it might be trying to turn around at. Filling this imbalance, guys. Okay. Once price gets to these areas, folks, right now, now, I drew this line out way before, right? You guys saw this line yesterday, all right? This imbalance area right here, okay? That's what this is. Look at where price goes, right to it. Look at where price turns around, right there. Now, I'm not expecting price to crash, right? If anything, I'm expecting a retracement. Where should price go? Well, let's just pull up a FIB tool. Hit it there. OK, this is an extension in price. All right. So price may retrace back down under this area, you know, to these areas here to refill this imbalance. Once it does that, it has the right to go higher. All right. You got to understand, guys, price action works off of algorithms. You have to give algorithms rules. You know, they don't just work. You have to give them rules to work from. And these are the rules, these levels, not trend lines. OK, not support and resistance. Where's the imbalance? Where's the liquidity? Go there first before you go here. And that's all price does. That's the entire algorithm, guys. 
So we can sit here and watch this all day. And I can tell you, hey, we may be turning around here. We may be turning around there. But these are levels that are easily found if you just take a look. Okay. So I think that's going to encapsulate the video for the day. We may come back later with, you know, some more news updates and things like that. There are some things going on in the market right now. Um, Curve Dow, another one that I've been watching relatively closely. You know, let's just take a look at the portfolio here. Um, just to give you guys an idea, everything in green is what I hold, right? So I'm holding some Algo, I'm holding some BTC, some ETH, some Doge, some Link, some Engine Token, some Filecoin, some Cardano, some Graph, some Curve Dow, and some Store J. These are the coins that I'm in right now, okay? Um, as I get into more, you will see more green things pop up here. The coins down here are things that I'm watching, all right? The purple. Everything in orange is pretty much either some kind of um, comparison chart, BTC dominance, ETH dominance, top 100 ETH coins, top 100 versus BTC versus ETH, right? So we're tracking all of this different stuff here. Then I'm also looking at MANA. I'm looking at XRP. I'm looking at Starlink, right, which is another metaverse. I'm looking at um, SEND token. I'm looking at, what's that, Sandbox, right? Shiba Inu, Matic, Solana, DOT, One Token, Harmony, right? So these are... These are ones that I'm tracking, but I'm not necessarily in, right? So you guys could sort of see my portfolio, my thought process around everything just from these little flagged items here, all right? Um, there will be more, and I will be talking about these as time goes on. But for the most part, guys, um, what I'm trying to show you here is this price action. And that when price action is respected and played correctly, you can definitely take home scalps all day, all right? So... Hopefully this content has been useful. Again, guys, we are showing you execution. And I'll leave on this point. Trading is only about three things. Three things only. And if you can master these three things, then you can be a good trader. First part is analysis. If you're able to analyze the chart and see where things are happening, where they may happen, you have a leg up. The second thing is anticipation. Once price reaches an area, what am I going to do? What is my anticipated move? That's part two. The third part is the execution of that move. Having no fear, understanding that you may be in a drawdown, but price should ultimately go your way based on your analysis. Right? This is what we're looking for. Analysis, anticipation, execution. Those are the three pillars to trading. And we'll talk about that as we continue to move on. All right. But that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is the long and short. We will continue to encapsulate these plays and show you guys exactly what we're doing. Okay. From day to day, week to week. All right. This is your boy Maestro. Love. Salute. Y'all take care. We out.